Hey everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Welcome to my channel and thanks for being with me today. I'm going to do some more exploring with the sliced circles, such as we did with the lobster last week for the Alice quilt. And I will have a little bit of an update for you on that later on. But this time I want to try a couple other things. And so I'm using a white background this time and I learned my lesson. Sometimes I'm slow, but I usually catch on that instead of adding in pieces at the top and the bottom, that I am going to just make this extra long and then I can just trim it to whatever sizes I want after I do the sliding. If you didn't watch last week's video, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so I am using a white background this time. And then for the circle, I'm using this Tula Pink dot. And I'm going for this size circle, which will still give me some things on the side to square up my block, whatever it turns out to. So I have some fusible web on here, some Steamazine 2. And I'm going to put this roughly center which I know is unusual for me. Ordinarily, you would want me, you would see me put it off to the side. But for this, we're going to do the center. It may be later on that I make it an asymmetrical block, but not for this part. So I'm just going to fuse this down. And then for the Alice's Lobster, I used just a plain zigzag and invisible thread to go around the circle this time I want to do a decorative stitch and I have to think about what color I want it in. Not white, not the same purple. I want something with some contrast. So I could do say a lavender or black or orange or who knows, anything <laughs> that I might want to do. I think I'll look for a lavender. I think I have some some light lavenders that I can do. And then I want to do a decorative stitch. And when I start the decorative stitch, I'm going to start it, I think, right about here. Because as I'm doing this stitch, it's meant to be a linear stitch. So as I come around the circle, odds are that it is not going to meet correctly. So my plan is that I'm going to do it about here and that's where I'll make the slice so that that joint actually is hidden in a seam. Once I slide these, you won't be able to tell that um, this the stitch is cut. So in that respect, it would be fine no matter where I started it. But because if this ends up, if the, the join ends up in the middle of a finished strip, then it's going to def you'll be able to see that join or lack thereof. <laughs> so if I slice it down the middle, then I know it's going to be in the seam. So I will start there. Hopefully that will be more clear when I come back and show you what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and fuse these, choose a stitch and go find some lavender thread. And because I just like to move bulks of things from one room to another in my house, I'm wondering if pink might be kind of interesting. This one I think isn't right, but that one or the pink one. I would ask for your, your opinions in the comments, which of course you are welcome to do, <clears throat> but I have to make a decision before I can read those. So, pink, lavender, pink, lavender. Whoops, pink, lavender. <laughs> hmm. All right, I'll make a decision and you'll be surprised. When I said I would surprise you with the color, I had originally meant deciding which of those two threads it would be, but in fact, I ended up with a darker pink, which I think works better. The other one, I think when it was just a single thread off, it was going to be too light. Wouldn't be enough contrast with the white. So I did the bubbly sort of stitch. Ordinarily, I would have, sorry, <laughs> use my other little finger. I would have closed that up more, but I kind of like that lacy open look. 
And it's interesting that this doesn't have much of a modern feel to me because this is, although it's a bright fabric, it's a, this dot print is quite in some ways traditional. And when you combine it with this pink and that particular stitch, it looks more traditional old fashioned than I thought it would. It's okay. I love it, but it's, it's just a different look. If I had used a really bold print, I think it would have been a completely different effect. So, oh, and by the way, I purposely placed these dots at an angle so that it, if at some point the line wasn't perfectly straight, it wasn't going to be a problem for OCD folks. Not mentioning any names, but Karen. All right, so here is where it joined. It actually wasn't too bad. It just made for a longer bubble there. So what I'm going to do is cut it right there when I make my vertical swipe or stripe. Let me try that, that again. When I make my vertical slice there, that will cut through and that join is going to be hidden in the seam. So I will do, I will actually want to, hmm, hmm. I was gonna say, it's a long bit to be doing with my 12 inch ruler, but I don't have a wider mat anyway. So here we are. And once I find my rotary cutter, I will be back to slice that. I put my rotary cutter right where it was supposed to be. That's unusual for me and it did not work to my advantage this time. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my ruler right up where that join is and then make sure I square it up on this side, which I'm wearing close-up glasses. <laughs> so pardon me if I'm getting my head in the shot here. Line that up and move that up a bit, actually. I want to get all through the circle with one slice. And these are just random places for cutting strips. When I chose that spot for the join, it was just to... Um, I chose it at a random place. And it's not very straight to the bottom, but... That's going to get changed anyway. So finish up that slice. So there's one. Now I have a choice. I could do it fairly even across here, or I could make a really narrow one. Last week I did one that was fairly even, but I think I want to do a narrow center this time. And... I need to make sure that I have enough left after I do a half inch worth of seam, quarter inch on either side. So I might in fact move this over just a bit. And of course, the larger the circle, the more uneven you could make these as a practical matter. I'm gonna try this. The center one's going to be pretty narrow once we get the seams in, but we are exploring Oh, and while I'm I'm speaking of that, I will fairly often get comments that um, you would like to see me put all of these blocks together in a quilt. This is what happens when I have whew, wrong glasses on for doing this. And I appreciate that. And I am actually doing that with the Alice quilt. The thing about what I do is more about exploring than a finished quilt. So some of these blocks, may go absolutely nowhere. Maybe I'll do an orphan block or mishmash quilt. Maybe I won't. It's just, see, I'm going to make this look like a lobster again, aren't I? <laughs> um, but what I'm doing is just looking for new ways to do things. Sometimes I like what I do, sometimes less so. And Sometimes I'll do a single block like the pineapple geese block and decide I really like it and I make a lot of those and make it into a quilt. In, in the case of the pineapple geese, it was the bungee quilt. So um, I appreciate the comment and you know, there are times when I really want to do that too, but then I think of something else I want to explore. I may have mentioned before that I have a short attention span all right, so this, the 
uh, Alice one will definitely go into the Alice quilt. Some of these others may or may not be in a quilt. I may make more of these and make a quilt out of it. I may use this in conjunction with some other quilts. That's why I'm doing um, modern fabrics and a lot of white backgrounds, though I know that white is not everyone's favorite for a background. It uh, means that if I decide I want to put them together into a single quilt, it will be a, a more cohesive bit. So similar to what I did on what I am doing, she's talking like she's finished it, <laughs> on my Christmas mishmash quilt. And I will link um, in the description below those um, various videos that I did, that I just mentioned. All right, now the last one looked, oh dear, this is still gonna look like a lobster with a, a lobster who's swimming, who's doing the crawl. It's just gonna look like a lobster. I'm sorry, people, that I put that in, <laughs> put that into your heads. Now you can, no, you can't see, but if I zoom out, you can see. If you remember last time I had a shorter piece here, more of a square, and so when I started shifting these, I had to add pieces on, which was very awkward. It would have been much easier with this white background, but the um, print that I had made that much more difficult. So um, this time I made it longer so that as I start shifting, I still have room to trim here and I don't have to add on extra pieces, which is extra work and um, can add to just dis add distractions to it when you've got a seam in the middle. All right. So now I have to decide I want how I want to shift this. There are going to be slices in between. I could do it more like this. So a lobster whose claws are unevenly sized could be a bird. I. Hmm. Just to try it, I think I'm going to do it this way this time. And I'm going to make the strips uneven widths. So one is going to be very narrow and one is going to be wider. Ordinarily, if I insert a strip and I want to maintain the circle's proportions, I would cut the strips an inch because I'm losing a half inch in here, quarter inch on this seam, quarter inch on this seam. So um, I need to have, so that's a half inch I have to make up for. So when I cut the strip, it's a quarter inch off the strip, quarter inch off the strip, I need a half inch in the end. So I would cut them one inch and that's what I did last week. But this, because these are shifted, um, I think it'll be okay to have uneven strips in between. So I want to try that. And I'm probably, <laughs> no surprise to you, I'm probably going to do a black and white strip for one of them. And I think it will probably be this one. And then this one, hmm. <laughs> I don't know, definitely not white. Well, it could be white. What would happen if we did white? This one would be off floating, wouldn't it? I might cut a white strip just to see how that would look, but I'm pretty sure I wanna do a black and white stripe here, which will bring this back more to the modern mode. One of the things I was thinking about even last week that I forgot, this sort of pattern I think might be really wonderful with those beautiful oriental fabrics. It, it just has that sort of Japanese or Oriental feel to it. And I just think that would look really cool. Do a variety of these and make them into blocks, maybe different, maybe make long blocks. I'm thinking of like shoji screens or something where you would have long pan. Anyway, I digress as usual. All right. I'm going to cut a white strip. I don't think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm just curious about how it would look. And then I'll also get a black and white strip here. I am back with a white strip for here. And that, I cut it extra wide because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. 
right off the bat it strikes me as eh, but we'll see. And then because I am a collector of black and white stripes, <laughs> I have choices here. And I've cut all of these to seven eighths. It's because I want a narrower strip. I may cut it even narrower, not sure yet. So there's a straight, uh, close together stripe. Here is a wide, well, same width, but the stripe is wider. I don't know, you know what I mean? Bigger stripe, we'll call it a bigger stripe. Straight, and then a big stripe, straight. So far I'm liking that one. And then somewhere, here we are, I have a bias stripe, diagonal stripe. It has really almost a cream background, which I think is affecting my feeling about that one, honestly. I'm liking this one the best. Let me know if you think I've made a good choice there. I don't think I want white here. Just for giggles, let's see what would happen if I used this. Oh, that's kind of a new dimension to it, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, you know what? I even like it with this off to the side here and a piece up there. Hmm. Does that mean that I'd want a piece, say, over here to ground it? I don't want the whole thing framed in that. Oh... Hmm. Hmm. This would not, I would piece in um, some white here, possibly. Yes, I think I would have this go all the way to the bottom, piece in a little bit of white here. And, well, I don't know where I'm going to end up cutting this off probably here, but then have a little purple strip over here to ground this side. Hmm. Who knew I might like that? What if I do this? I thought it was just so I could immediately say nope, 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 but Adds a whole other dimension or piece to that, doesn't it? Hmm. Hmm. What does it look like if we don't have that? Now, I really like that over there. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. So this would not go all the way down. In fact, it would be higher up probably. It, it would be graduated. And then this would be whatever length that is, the little bit of white down here. This will go all the way down here and I'll have a little purple here, which will balance everything out. Whew. Lots to think about. All right, first thing I'm going to do, what is the first thing I'm going to do? This, I need to add a white strip on the bottom. Yes, so I'm just going to probably cut it right in the middle here or a place where the, it's probably not even the same white, but it's going to, it will have to do. Or I could even do it higher up and have this go all the way to the top. All right, so that's what I'll do. This will be, have a seam here. So, well, the rest of this will be white. 
add a purple strip on here. So when I add on the white, I'm going to leave it long enough that I can cut it even with whatever purple I put there. And it will probably be pretty narrow. This piece will have a white stripe strip that finishes up to the top of that and then goes almost to the bottom here. Sorry, I'm just thinking this through. You may be on the other end screaming, no, no. All right, first step, I'm gonna add a purple bit down here. Um, and some white onto that, and then we'll come back and start piecing the rest together. All right, so I began to think, how wide do we want this strip in this middle? We can have it pretty narrow. We can have it really wide. I might have hit on, or this is just what I'm used to seeing and now everything else looks wrong. All right, so that's going to be about, it's going to finish at one and a quarter-ish which means I want to cut it at one and three quarters wide. And then what's left of that strip, I can put down here and that could be trimmed to whatever height I want it to be. All right, one and three quarters, strip on here, strip on there. Gonna I'm do making it. some progress with how this is going to go together. I like that up here I'm meeting, this is very hard to do through the camera, by the way. <laughs> I like these meeting here. And I'm wondering if on this side piece, which is gonna be pretty narrow, quick fold here. Do I want that to meet there or do I want a little bit of white up there? I think I want a little bit of white up there. Then I think I'll be ready to sew these all together and do some trimming. I'm going to, once I get this corner finished, I'm going to cut all of those to an equal height at the top, just as a reference point so I can sure I get, can be sure that I'm getting these distributed. This pink thread is sort of losing, getting lost in all this, but there can be foo and stuff, <laughs> embellishments on it to bring those out a bit more. But that will be for another time. Let me, I'm cutting these an inch wide. And then this one, so I'll have an inch wide piece at the top here this will go all the way to the bottom so that this balances things out. I hope, I think. So I have all the pieces ready to sew, but I want to trim along this top edge, which will be my reference point for how everything is slid to its slid position, as it were. So I'm going to trim that off do the sewing, then we'll come back and trim the bottom, and that should be it, I think, until we do the foufra and embellishments. Right, I turned it sideways so you can see the whole thing, and this part is trimmed. I know it looks like it's bowed, and it may be slightly bowed, but it's mostly the angle of the camera. It looks straight when you are straight on. So I am going to make sure that when I'm trimming these, I'm lining up straight lines. Well, maybe I'm lining up straight lines. Maybe I didn't sew straight lines. Some new pressing. So I'm lining those up. And again, we've got the angle of the camera is bad. And trim that up. And there we have it. I could make it a little bit shorter if I wanted to, but I don't know that I want to. It is quite different from what we did last week. Let me pull that out and you can see.
It has, of course, the shifted circle, but it turned out to be about the same length, didn't it? Huh, interesting. All right, so on this one, our little Alice's Lobster, I added, you can't see it very well, but I added some red big stitches, three wavy lines. And then I also used French knots to hold down a kind of loosey-goosey pink silk ribbon, sort of balance that out and offset it. And there's probably going to be more going on. But then we have this one, which is similar, of course, if it's a sliced and slid circle, but with some other stuff going on, we made this wider. We made it the same color as the circle, did a wide stripe here, and then added some framing. And this is to balance out that. And I could, if I wanted to, let me pull that out, so as not to confuse, I could add some purple over here, maybe um, a strip that is white from here down to here and make that purple. That's a possibility. But I, I like the asymmetry of this piece, I think. All right, and I also, so that's going to be it for this. Please do let me know in the comments other things that you think would be good to try with this general concept and any embellishments and stuff that you might, you think might be good on this particular block. I like it. It's quite different. For, I like the lobster block, but I also like this one. It needs a something something over here. Maybe this just needs to be narrower. I think that would help, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, that's better. So we want it to be narrower. So how much have I got that turned under? That's about an inch under. And I would probably do three quarters of an inch when I trimmed it because I have to leave room for the seam in the end, of course. Let me know what you think and other ideas you have for it. And now this is a lobster block. Because I was doing hand embroidery stuff, I backed it with a thin white batting just so the, the knots get kind of buried and the, the stitches don't shadow through. There will be more going on. I think there'll be beads. It's going to be a really interesting one to quilt, but hey, we live for interesting, right? Now, also on Alice Blocks, um, I have started working on doing some extra stuff on them. So this stripe will be coming on here in some fashion. And same with this block. This will be coming across somehow or other. And I'm doing things to tie the whole thing together, which I'm using the same fabrics and colors, which of course goes a long way, but I'm also, well, all right, who am I kidding? I just like black and white stripes. You know this about me. One of, I am going to try to get to work on, it's kind of nice to have something that is a color scheme that I can use no matter what I'm trying out or most any time I'm trying out. That's very handy to do. But the MQG, the uh, Modern Quilt Guild, for their quilt con conference in February, they uh, one of the categories is maximalist. And Alice Wondering is so maximalist. So I would like to get her put together and quilted for the quilt con. I'll have to look and see what the um, entry date is. And then also for Alice, I have started doing this um, on the wonky spool. I'm doing a line like that. And then I have a couple of circles to put on here. I'm not sure I might do something like that, or I might 
put the circle like that and do more circles and more foo-foo-ra. I don't know. If we're going maximalist, let's go maximalist, right? So that is where I am with Alice. And I will put up a picture of Alice as she stands at the moment. I haven't figured out where this is going to go yet, though. Oops. Now that I see a lobster, it has to be that way. And I'm running out of the room, uh, running out of room at the table where I'm laying this out. So I'll see what happens, but I will post a photo of what I'm doing. Less this, maybe, I don't know. And I will also do just next up a video on something else that I'm working on. One of my abstract quilts that's going to go over the mantle in my living room once it gets painted and the floors refinished and all of that. I just got the yard finished up yesterday, the backyard. All of those projects are done, thankfully. So now I'm ready, after a few days rest anyway, <laughs> to get the living room finished. And then the uh, quilt will be going over the mantle. Fortunately, the quilt is not, it's probably not going to be finished and quilted before I get the living room finished. So that will work. Anyway, so that's coming up. And then we'll talk a little bit about next week. So I wanted to do just a quick video updating on my mantelpiece quilt, not mantelpiece, above the mantle of my fireplace. The abstract that I designed, it's coming along. It's more than halfway pieced. There's a big chunk missing from there and this corner you need to just move up to fit in and then there's another piece in there but i'm pretty happy with how it's turning out things are meeting up where they should <laughs> circles behind things are continuous which is always nice and the the film strippy like thing is all the pieces are coming together correctly down there so it's coming along now all i have to do is <sighs> get a couple contractors in for the living room to paint and tear up the carpet and put down hardwood floors and I'll be good to go to refurnish the place. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate having you along for these quilting explorations. If you like what you see here, please remember to like and subscribe if you aren't subscribed. I am grateful to have you here. Please remember to make any comments, uh, suggestions for this. If you have other ideas for what we might have done instead of what we did, or ideas for embellishment, please share those. I always enjoy seeing what you have to suggest and your comments. I'm, I have all these friends all over the world and I really love that. I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out.